you are really alive. Okay, Instagram is checking the connection. YouTube is live. going live and Facebook is live. So this is Ask Dr. Love. And if love is the answer, what is your question? Ask Dr. Love is a podcast that answers the questions on acupuncture, Asian medicine, herbal medicine, nutrition, superfoods, and your health. So we're here today. I got a lot of information to cover because people keep asking me the questions. How do I get well with X? How do I get well with Y? How do I get well with Z? So I'm going to break this down for you as simply as possible. So we have organ function and we have musculoskeletal function. So the organs are inside the musculoskeletal structure. That's one system. Within that system, you've got the neuroendocrine and the digestive system. Then we have the respiratory and the circulatory system. Then we have the neuroendocrine system. Now, Organ function requires nutrition and it requires movement. Sleep requires rest and sleep also requires movement. Emotional regulation requires stillness and movement and spiritual Elevation requires stillness and movement. So I'm going to run through that again in case I went too fast. So we have sleep and sex. I left out the sex by accident. So we have sleep and sex. Sex requires movement. Sleep requires stillness. Then we have movement and meditation which is the key to all of these. We have emotional regulation. To regulate your emotions, energy and motion, we require movement and we require stillness. Spiritual elevation requires movement and stillness. Nutrition requires food and herbs and movement. So everything requires movement and stillness. And we teach Qigong with expansion and contraction. Expansion and contraction. So movement and stillness. So I am wearing something. Everybody looks at it and says, oh, you're wearing your bling today. This is not bling. This is a symbol that represents the law of opposites, yin and yang. And if you can see, within the yang, there's a little dot of yin, and within the yin, there's a little dot of yang. That means there's no absolutes in nature. So everything contains its own opposite, and it's a circle which implies revolution. Things are moving, expansion, contraction, hot, cold, damp, dry. So that is the basis of how to get well. So if you have an acute problem, it's typically hot, it's typically pain. If you have a chronic problem, it's typically cold and weak. Hot and dry, cold and damp. So we have all of these aspects. So how do we create wellness out of illness? How do we create movement out of stillness? How do we create stillness out of movement? So 
We all know we have a heart. We all know that the heart beats. We all know the purpose of the heart is to move the blood. But what if your posture was like this and you sat like this all day on the phone? What if you had a chair in your office and you sat like this in your office all day? What if you were like this in your office all day? Your posture determines your structure. Your structure determines your function. So the organs function best in the proper posture. So if you don't sit in your chair properly, if you don't sit on your couch properly, if you don't sit at your desk properly, if you don't sit in your kitchen chair properly, 5, 10, 15, 20 years of improper posture is going to affect your function. Now, what if you decide, ah, oh, my back hurts, because your posture is off and you decide, I don't want to walk today, I don't want to run today, I don't want to climb the steps today, I'm going to let the dog just run, I'm not going to actually walk the dog, I'm not going to go to the gym today because I don't feel like it. So your emotional state affects how you move. And your excessive movement, your ex excessive brain stimulation, your hyper brain affects your ability to slow your thinking, slow your brain wave patterns. So your thought is everything. The mind is everything. So you have feelings, you have thoughts, you have words, and you have actions. And we call this the reception vesicle. The reception vessel. How do you receive? Now, if you're out of balance, your feelings are probably also out of balance. If you're out of balance, your thoughts may not be correct. They're also probably out of balance. And if you're emotionally whacked out, your words may not serve you. Your words may antagonize. And instead of motivating and inspiring, they may be antagonizing and belittling and create bad feelings. And then what's worse is then you have actions based upon your thoughts and your feelings that are completely baseless and useless and actually damaging to your relationships. Wow, how could you do that to yourself? So just like you walk the dog, just like we used to run the horses, we have to dance our animals. You are an animal, you are human, and you are divine. And if you don't dance your animal, how, do you, how, does, how does your dog feel when you leave him locked up in the house all weekend and you don't walk him? What does he do? He chews the shoes. He chews the couch. He scratches a hole in the rug. He poops anywhere. Your dog lets you know he's not happy when you don't take him for a regular walk. Well, what does your body do when you don't exercise on a regular basis? The body turns acid. The body turns putrid. The lymph system doesn't work properly. And toxins don't get released. And you don't perspire, which is a way of opening up the pores of the skin so toxin, toxins can come out. Exercise is important, not just for muscle strength, not just for cardiovascular strength, but to create an artificial fever which kills bacteria, virus, fungus, and parasites. So what's the best way to get well? Is movement. But movement with intention, movement with a purpose, movement knowing how it's going to affect the organs, movement knowing the meridian flow, which we teach every day in the Boost Your Immune System online course. 
and you can register at lovechigong.com for that. But unless you know what your movement is doing to the muscles, the meridians, the organs, and your emotional state, you don't know what you're doing. So you have to go to somebody who knows meridians and knows muscles and knows structure and knows the function of your organs. Or you can go to someone like myself who can teach you how to do that. The second thing is energy. I want more energy. I sleep all night and I don't have any energy. I stay up all night and I don't have any energy. I take energy drinks and I don't have any energy. What am I supposed to do to get more energy? Well, there's sleep and there's rest and then there's relaxing their mind and slowing down the brain waves. So what happens when you go to sleep? Supposedly, your muscles relax. Supposedly, your spine elongates. Your heart slows down. Your respiration slows down. Your brain waves slow down. So waking state is called beta. That's when you've got the busy mind. And then when you get down to below nine cycles per second, you're in alpha. And then when you get down to six cycles per second, you're in theta. And then when you get down below three cycles per second, you're in delta. You need one hour of deep sleep. You need one hour in delta. And so you fall asleep from beta into alpha, into theta, and then into delta. And then you come back up again. And then you wake up briefly, and then you fall back asleep again. And you turn over, and your arm goes to sleep, and you gotta wake up to pee, and the dog started barking, and somebody's racing their car in the middle of the night. So all these things wake you up briefly, and then you fall back asleep. And it's when your brain slows down, where do you go when you go to sleep? You go to God. Because when your brain slows down to one or two cycles per second, that's when you plug in to the Most High. That's when you plug in to divine energy. And then when you come up to theta, which is between three and six cycles per second, that's when the healing genius kicks in. And that's when you can alter your subconscious programming. And that's when you do your healing. And how many times have you heard people say, I went to bed, I didn't feel well. But when I woke up, I felt great. Your body healed itself. Yes, there's 77 trillion cells that are going through their self-maintenance and cleaning process at night triggered by oxygen utilization but your brain literally shrinks so the fluids around your brain can go in and do their brain self-cleaning and maintenance so how do you get more energy how do you heal yourself you have to learn to slow your brain waves. Now, what if I could teach you how to do that? What if I could teach you how to slow your brain? What if I could teach you how to slow your heart rate, slow your respiration? What if I could teach you how to relax your muscles and literally elongate your spine? If I could teach you to do that in the daytime, then you wouldn't need to do it at night. And that is the essence of the advanced Blue Dragon medical training. So if you are interested in learning any of that, put it in the comments section or DM me in Instagram or send me an email. There's so many ways to connect because I can help everybody after 42 years, God would not send me anybody that I couldn't help. 
Okay, Dr. Love, that's all fine and good, but what about my emotions? What, I, what, what when I get angry? What about when I get worried? When, when I get fearful and anxious? How can, how can Qigong help me with that? Well, that's exactly what Qigong was designed for. I teach first level beginner students the five emotional release dances. The first one, it's called Wave Away Worry. And there's music that goes to that and there's lyrics that goes to that. And it's kind of silly, but I know you're gonna enjoy it. Then we have Transforming Fear into Courage and it's called the Kidney Flow. Hey, ho, do the kidney flow. And that's fun. And then we have the Liver Dance. Anger, Frustration, Resentment shame blame and guilt this is part of the programming i no longer allow to be built <laughs> so behavior modification and the repetition of the words the silliness of the song and the music help you pick up your drama throw out the bucket go tell your mama my issues in my tissues so it's part programming part music, part dance, and it is effective at releasing stored anger, drama creation, and the anger that's damaging due to your constricting your chest. So how do you get well? How do you resolve chronic and degenerative disease? How do you resolve liver issues? How do you resolve uh, cancer? All the types of cancer. How do you resolve that? By releasing and loosening the liver. By learning how to love yourself. The liver likes love. The liver stores the blood. The liver controls the menses. The liver controls the muscles and the tendons and the joints. Whoa, the liver has a huge function outside of what Western medical says it is. And the Chinese have been doing this for 5,000 years. Western medicine has only been around since 1888 when they learned to do antisepsis during surgery. Whoa. So, we do the liver emotional release dance. Then we do the lung swim for grief and sorrow and attachment to negative thought patterns and negative beliefs, self-limiting beliefs, automatic negative thoughts, and self-destructive behaviors. Because we get on a, loop, on a loop. Human beings are addictive by nature. We're habitual. And if we can't get what we want when we want it, then I want a candy, I want a gum, I want a chocolate, I want a smoke, I want a beer, I want a wine, I want a sex, I want a shop, I want to gamble. I'm gonna do something outside instead of being still, instead of breathing and calming and relaxing the nervous system. Because every time you breathe in, you push down on the adrenal glands and how does that make your nervous system feel? Very comforted. So your breathing is the third way to heal yourself. And then the last way is spiritual elevation, which requires physical discipline, which is your heart, healing your heart, opening your heart. So why do people close their hearts? They build a wall around their hearts to protect themselves from being hurt, from abandonment, from rejection, from betrayal, from abuse. That's what we do. We humans don't want to get hurt. We don't necessarily seek pleasure unless we're addicted to it. 
but we'd rather avoid pain than actually seek pleasure. And just like fear requires knowledge to overcome, love also requires knowledge to be put into practice. Wow! Love requires knowledge because love is not just a feeling. Love is an action. And if you don't study yourself, how can you love yourself? How can you love someone else? Love requires knowledge of self and how your musculoskeletal fits into your neuroendocrine, which fits into your circulatory, which fits into your respiratory, which fits into your digestive, which fits into your reproductive. Because sex and food are both requirements for nurturing the human soul. Thank you for allowing me to preach. Thank you for being my congregation today. I am the high priest in the order of Imhotep, which is the Egyptian god of medicine. I thank you for allowing me to share with you the small bits of wisdom that I've accumulated over the last 42 years. You can ask your questions now about anything going on with your health in the comments section below. Can you repeat that quote for me? Just like fear requires knowledge, love also requires knowledge. Love requires knowledge of self in so, order to be put into action. Nice. We have a couple questions here already. Okay. The number one question from someone said that they went for a walk because of your amazing preaching. Okay. <laughs> Dana Frank asks, "How do I resolve tinnitus. tinnitus? Tinnitus. Tinnitus. Okay. So there's three causes of tinnitus. Tinnitus. Number one is what we call mucus obstruction of the head. That means you're eating too many mucus forming foods, you're not drinking enough water, and the mucus turns into like a jelly, and then that impacts the fluid in your ear, which causes the buzzing, clicking, ringing. Number two is overexposure to electromagnetic radiation. So that means if you were a DJ and you're wearing headphones, or you work in a radio station where there's a lot of electronics, or you're an airline pilot and you, too many hours in the air, that will also cause clicking, buzzing, ringing in the ears. The next way uh, of, of that is because as you get old and you don't exercise, there's not enough blood going to your head and you could have temporomandibular joint syndrome, which is a $1.50 word, which means TMJ, which just means your lower jaw is jammed up and it cuts off blood flow to the ear canal, which then causes that buzzing, clicking, ringing. So now that I've explained to you the three causes, the way to treat it is to figure out which one of those is your cause and then backtrack and then we can resolve it. It could be herbs, it could be exercise, it could be qigong, it could be acupuncture, it could be self-massage, it could be ear magnets. There's any number of ways to get rid of it. But until we get to your cause, okay, so if you want to call me, and make an appointment for telemedicine, that would be appropriate. Melody Miller says, when I'm asleep, I'm relaxed. When I wake up, my jaw hurts from clenching my teeth. Okay, so why do you clench your teeth? Again, 
three causes. Number one is called unresolved conflict. So that means something's going on in your day to day. You haven't been able to figure it out. You go to sleep and then there's this nagging worry that you forgot to do something or you did something wrong. And so that's number one. Number two is future fear, future worry. So what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? And that is way more common than anybody knows. Jaw clenching, claw, blah, 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 blah. jaw clenching and grinding your teeth. So my story, I went to the dentist and he said, gee, your molars are all flat. And I'm like, my molars are flat. How do you get flat molars? He said, you're grinding your teeth. I'm like, I don't grind my teeth. And he's like, yeah, let me show you. And I'm like, why am I grinding my teeth? And he says, I cannot tell you why, Dr. Love. You got to figure out why you're grinding your teeth. So I went home and I told my wife. And she says, oh yeah, you've been grinding your teeth for years. I'm like, why didn't you tell me? She said, I thought you knew. And then that night, it dawned on me, I didn't want to be married. I was unhappily married. So I moved out. I went back to the dentist three months later and he says, congratulations, you stopped grinding your teeth. Well, what did you do? I said, I left my wife. <laughs> Melody, don't take that personally. I'm not telling you that that's your cause. I'm just telling you there are Three causes, you gotta figure out why. Okay. Next question. <laughs> if I exercise outside and I'm hot, am I creating a fever in my body even if I don't sweat? Now that is an excellent question and there's a very easy answer. You've gotta take your temperature before, during, and after. That's how we can find out. Now. What is considered a fever? Is it 101? Is it 102? You tell me. You were a kid. You probably had a fever when you were a kid. If you're a parent, you already know the answer. Regular temp is 98.6. 98.6. So 99, ah, 100, ah, 101, that's a fever. So you got to take your temperature. Then you can tell me. If you're not sweating, that's a problem. The way to fix the not sweating is to do the detox. And so you could do the 21 days, which is seven days juicing for dinner, seven days juicing for breakfast and dinner, seven, uh, seven days juicing four times a day. You could do that. Or you could just go straight into the four times a day, whatever works for you. But that will definitely fix your not sweating issue. Well, Dr. Love, can you remind the viewers to like and share this so their friends and family can get all this useful information? Thank you for reminding me, Mr. Producer. Please like and share this podcast because this information is gold. I drop pearls every day. So you've got to like and share so more people get access to this wonderful information. I carry around an encyclopedia inside my head and I've got to get it out before I die and I'm already a hundred years old so I don't have long to live. <laughs> Keep the mood up. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me sad. <laughs> I guess, um, another thing is too, subscribing to the podcast. Subscribe to the podcast. It's a, the anchor.fm link is pinned in the comments. The anchor.fm slash askdrlove is pinned in the comments. Click on that and register. And just subscribe. Subscribe. That's the word. Okay. Rachel says, I have an issue with sleeping. I get up about three to five times a night and extreme leg cramps. And I got to pee. This is happening for years and... I can't resolve it, can't seem to resolve it, and I also grind my teeth at night. Is it normal? Three to five is it nine. normal? Is it normal? Are you kidding me? If you had leg cramps more than a year, you should have been gone to some 
massage therapist or some acupuncturist or some fitness trainer. You should have been running up and down the steps, dear Rachel. Three flights of steps three times a day. The leg cramps are a prediction of peripheral vascular disease. That means that the veins are literally dying in your calf muscles. And unless you were athletic as a, as a teenager, your body's not about to regrow those veins. And once the veins start to die, then the arteries start to die, and then you get congestive heart disease. Because once you get those leg cramps, then your ankles are gonna swell, then your legs are gonna swell, and then your femoral artery, it's gonna back all the way up into your kidneys, and then it's gonna back up into your heart. Now, that takes five, 10, 15 years to happen, but if you see it already, if you see the leg camp cramps, you see the broken blood vessels, you see the swollen ankles, you have to be aggressive and contact me immediately so that I can teach you how to reverse all that. The leg cramps, not a good thing. Waking up three to five times, not just to pee, it's because your nervous system has not been able to process the brainwave patterns. So it is normal to wake up and fall back asleep. That's normal. But if you wake up and you can't go back to sleep or you have excessive urination at night, we have to change the amount and the type of fluids that you are consuming. You need to go for a walk every night, sometime between five and seven or seven and nine. So I'm gonna give you a quick uh, yin-yang explanation. Yang time is nine to five in the daytime. That's when you're active, aggressive, outgoing. 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. is a transition from yang to yin. 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. is high yin time. And then one to five is a transition time. And then we shift back into yang. So what we want to do with the leg cramps and the waking up to pee is drink your water earlier in the day. So what that means is the first hour you need to drink 30 ounces of distilled water the first hour and then 16 ounces every hour for five hours and then drink tea before, during, and after each meal. And don't drink anything after five o'clock and see if that's gonna change your waking up to pee. Now, you're also gonna to have to meditate at night, sometime between, uh, for 30 minutes, sometime between nine and 11 p.m. And you can't stay up past midnight. You cannot stay up past midnight. So that is an issue for you, Rachel, if that was who asked the question. Yes. Okay. Um, around, along the same line, my body, especially my face, lightly sweats when I eat. Is this my thyroid? Good job. Aha. Good job. Okay, so a lot of people's head sweat when they eat. That is a normal reaction to eating unless you're eating too much or you're eating too fast. So you should chew every mouthful 32 times before you swallow. And drink tea during and after, drink two cups of tea during and after your meal and see if that changes anything. All right, no more questions. Wow, that was the most rewarding and fascinating podcast. So I gotta do a commercial for the stop smoking and the lose weight. Surprisingly, one of the biggest causes of weight gain in women over 40 is a hormone imbalance. And 
if you want to get your hormones tested contact me we can do the hormone test and then we can find out if that is the cause but we've got the weight loss program in place if you want to quit some quit smoking someone you know someone you care about wants to quit smoking have them contact me. I've got the stop smoking tea. I've got the ear magnets. We've got the qigong exercises. We've got the breathing exercises. And we've got the bicarbonate of soda, which will absolutely reduce your cravings for cigarettes. So unless there's any last minute questions, I want you to, to know that I'm doing this for you. This is really, really important because there's a lot of misinformation and there's a lot of disinformation. And there's an issue with health literacy and doctors are not interested in teaching you how to not get sick. To a man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So the issue for me is if I teach you what the causes are, which they don't, if I teach you how you can heal yourself, which they don't, then I'm lifting the vibration of the planet. And I get thank yous every day, all day long, four or five times a day. People write me, call me, thank me, send me letters. I get at least two letters every week thanking me for the advice they've, they've just gotten from the podcast. So if you support health literacy, then go to lovechigong.com and register. Somebody well, did ask what kind of tea. What kind of tea? This kind of tea. This is the kind of tea. And it's on your website? It will be, or you can just contact me. Uh, I didn't want to put it on the website because I didn't want to have like a thousand orders, uh, but only for people uh, in the podcast. People who are subscribed to the podcast are the only ones who are going to learn about this. Now, this is the ear magnets. And... Okay, so this is a wallet card. And that's what the ear magnets look like. And so we have a rod and we have a disc. And this is your point to the Facebook pointer. And Ah, okay. There we go. And that's what they look like up there. I get, yes, I guess you can see that. And Mark, Mark Becker has a question. Okay. Do you love me? <laughs> Do you really love me now that I cheat dance? Yes, Mark, I still love you, even though you can't dance, at, but you try. <laughs> So we've got the rod and we've got the disc. I don't know if you can see that. You're the, somebody says you're the best doctor in the world. Wow. <laughs> well, when they name a building after me, then I'll, then I'll know that that's true. <laughs> Introduce me to Akon. We'll build a... We'll build a Something in Africa? Yeah, we'll send a, a, a hospital. We'll build a natural hospital in Africa. So that's what it looks like. And there's 60 uh, acupressure points on the ear. And so there's uh, three points for stop smoking, three points for weight loss. Uh, anybody who buys the ear magnets, you get a 94 page uh, ebook on uh, ear reflexology and how to use the magnets. And that's about it. So lose weight, stop smoking, do qigong, drink more water, Cut your meat in half, two salads a day, and two fruits too. We're going to do that rap song, you and me.
Yeah. We're going to do that rap song. Yeah, I'm down for it. I'm, You're down? I'm trying to be on my first feature with Dr. Love. Okay. Dr. Love featuring the holistic one. There you go. There you go. You'll be my guest. All right. So your health is in your hands. Prevention is the only cure. And in order to be well, you've got to chi well. Thanks for watching. Until tomorrow. 11 a.m. every day, Monday through Friday. Like, share, tell everybody. Your mama, your sister, your cousin.